Okay, good afternoon guys. I just did our garlic harvest for this year. Usually I would do it in July, but we need room in the bed. So some of them are a little smaller, but I'm gonna wash them off and I'll show you what the final product looks like. have about 50 cloves here a bunch didn't sprout up and then some of them rotted okay now i'm gonna braid the garlic i've never done this before i'll probably do about three bundles out of these and two out of those but i'll show you as soon as i'm finished okay i just got done braiding the garlic stems they look awesome so i'm gonna hang them in here in the greenhouse and just let them dry and hang out for a couple days and then i'll bring them inside to dry if you missed our YouTube short, we posted about our call ducks that we brought home about a week ago. When we brought them home, they were already a week old. Look how big they are now. This is Topanga, and she is a sweetheart. Their names are Cory and Topanga. We're really hoping for boys and girls, but they're already getting so big. This is Cory, and as you can see, his feet are much more orange, and his bill is much more orange than Topanga. He's also quite a bit more feisty, but he's already getting his big kid feathers. Same with Topanga. Our next big update on the farm is that our shipment of 16 chicks arrived this morning from Meyer Hatchery. We had one that was a little sad and lethargic, but we got her some electrolyte water, and she seems to be doing well now. I do raise my ducks and my chicks together. It helps with integrating later on, and they are around the same age. The only time I separate is if there is any form of bullying. We have quite a few broody mamas and we contemplated putting some of the chicks underneath them because Gray, our cochin up here, is a wonderful mother. She's hatched several of her own eggs. But our silkies are too small that they could only cover a couple of chicks. And I'm not sure how our Easter egger would do. She's very sweet towards people, but I don't know how she would do with baby chicks. But I wanted to show you guys this. Okay, I really wanted to show you guys this fairy egg that was laid today. As you can see, it's got a bunch of calcium deposits on it. Uh, we get fairy eggs probably every other month we'll get one. It usually happens because an egg went through the reproductive tract too fast, but they're wicked cute and they're very cool. I'll break it open and show you guys what's in this one. Okay, we have a wood-burning stove over here by our broody <laughs> duck. Oh, let me crack open this fairy egg and show you what's inside. So it looks like this one is just egg white, but sometimes they'll have a little tiny yolk or sometimes it will only be yolk. It's very cute. I've never eaten one. Sometimes we feed them to the dog. There's nothing wrong with them. They just came out a little too quick. Things in the garden have really taken off recently. So I wanna give you guys an update. Green's bed with all our spinach, lettuce, and kale is overflowing. Blackberry bushes on the end of the front greenhouse bed are doing awesome. Same with our strawberries. We've already started picking some. We have carrots, radishes, and beets down here. And we've got peas up along the trellis. We've already started getting some. And look at all these flowers. We're going to get a bunch more very soon. We are going to replace these with loofahs in July because the peas are a cold weather crop and loofahs are a summer crop. Tomatoes have gotten huge. Same with our morning glory vines over here, but we've already got some tomatoes on them. Working on getting our other cattle panel arch here because these cucumbers are supposed to be growing up that. However, we do have acorn squash and butternut squash growing crazy over here. Some more cucumbers that'll be a later harvest from these ones. And then these are summer squash and zucchini. Had I known they were summer squash and zucchini when I planted them, I wouldn't have put them there. They were a gift and that spot is not really the greatest. It's a little too small, but everything still has vegetables growing. There's a female. 
And then over here we have a bunch of acorn squash. There's three right there. And then some more up here on the vine. Like I said, the tomatoes have gone crazy. These are cherry tomatoes. I'm letting them do their thing. They've already got nice healthy tomatoes on them. Same with everything over here. There's tomatoes everywhere. Last year we didn't have tomatoes until almost fall. This is the cut flower bed. Everything looks amazing. Okay, over here we had tomatoes on the back side. We're letting those vine like they would naturally. We don't have anything to hold them up. They are cherry tomatoes, peppers, some alyssum, uh, mini white pumpkin, and dill. And as you can see, the dill's starting to flower. So I'm gonna come out and harvest it soon, but I'm also gonna harvest these and save seeds. The potatoes are growing like crazy. We've got watermelon over here, along with our direct sowed corn and then our transplanted corn and our sunflowers we put in between the corn. These are acorn squash and then that last tire is a cantaloupe. We have more tomatoes over here. Again, we're letting them vine and do their thing. They already have tomatoes on them and they look healthy. Everything's doing really well, but we don't have anything to hold them up. So we're just gonna let them do their thing. The pumpkin patch is doing awesome. We still have to mulch this last corner over here. But other than that, everything seems to be growing pretty quick. This was the bed I pulled the garlic out of, so I'm gonna weed it and clean it up. And I will probably add a little bit more of our compost before I put something new in here. Okay, I don't remember what my last goat update was, but right now all we have is Mary Jane and her baby. We ended up finding an amazing home for Luna and her twins, and everyone got to go together and are staying together. She has been an amazing milk mama. I get a half a gallon from her every morning. So I just finished collecting all this cream and this big one will make the small jar, mason jar of butter. You want to freeze it. You want to do one week, next week, and next week then put it in the fridge after you collect this top part so that way it's cold because the butter will be made a lot faster if you use cold cream especially one that has a little bit of frozen chunks in it okay look at that it's beautiful it's really thick and you want to make sure that you're getting as little of the liquid as possible if you're not using a cream separator i use a spoon and i make sure to skim as little of the actual milk and try and get as much cream as i can Now that all the cream is in, you don't want to turn it right on to high. So I'm going to use this towel and wrap it around just so it doesn't have any backsplash. I just use my hand towel and a clothespin. I wanted to show you the whipped cream stage, but I was making dinner and it is already turning into butter. And as you can see, it's a lot different than regular butter because it's white. When I used to do this, it would take me two hours and I was doing smaller batches because I was using fresher cream. Since I've been freezing it, it makes it a lot faster. Okay, I have my bowl of ice water here and I'm just gonna take this off and get all the butter out and I'm going to clean the butter in the ice water to get all the buttermilk out of it and when you put it in the ice water it'll clump right up because obviously butter gets hard when it's cold. Okay, and I'm gonna save this buttermilk because this is really good for biscuits. Okay, here I have my buttermilk and I'm gonna use this to make biscuits tomorrow for dinner. And here I have my butter. I've squished it down a little, but as you can see, I left an air pocket on the side just so if there is any liquid, I could dump it out. And there was a little bit. You want as little liquid as in here as possible. Time to put the puppy and the goats to bed. We use a mix of feeds for the goats. We use Purina Dairy Goat Feed, which is only because we're milking Mary Jane. 
we will switch to just regular goat feed mixed with a 12 percent um sweet feed which is what has the corn and the molasses and the darker color so this is the dairy goat purina feed that we feed and then i think our sweet feed is producer's pride yes it is like i said it's 12 percent and then they get hay just had dinner and took a shower time to collect eggs and put the chickens to bed Well, that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next video.